maybe be successful in the long term if everybody around it was also being successful, and that includes the planet. So um, you know, we had some of we had some of the core principles there, but we then had to to, to make it real. So I think there's probably quite a few different answers to this one, but um, so after establishing that um, program and making it quite personal. Um, how do you then measure sustainability so that you can actually demonstrate these improvements? Um, Barry? Yeah, no, happy to, happy to carry on that one. I, I, think, I think nobody has all of the answers on this. I think we, we, we try and measure both the outcomes. So what does it mean in greenhouse gas, water stress, land use, poverty alleviation, in human rights, so sort of the core and the packaging, what are the core outputs? But what we've tried to develop some leading indicators that we can measure um, measure people against. So the procurement function, which you know, need to be the heroes of this, we generate, come up with a measure called next generation sourced. So each one of our procurement directors, if they're buying dairy or buying cocoa or they're buying packaging, they have a metric that they're measured against every year, a progression towards 100% next generation sourced. Um, and that means that the percentage of their supply base which is truly sustainable uh, we measure that alongside value service the usual procurement metrics um, so we, we've integrated that and then at an executive level we've linked long-term incentives to uh, our greenhouse gas footprint um, and likely next year to our packaging footprint uh, and uh, uh, you know that gets the attention what's the general manager measured on Obviously, traditionally, sales, cash, uh, earnings, but also one or more sustainability metrics, and they then have to manage that tension, uh, and uh, that that ultimately is critical. I think. Okay. So, Malcolm, do you have any alternatives or other ways? Well, not so much alternatives, but I guess I, I would add a little bit of what Barry was saying. I think I think you have to measure. I think it's really important to measure. That's how you track your performance. That's how you focused on, on, on continuous improvement uh, but at the same time I think measures of sustainability are incredibly complex you know, there is no one single measure uh, so yeah water usage is important you know, land usage is important greenhouse gas emissions are important you know, plastics are a use of plastics but actually, I think you need really, really careful something like plastics so for instance you single-use plastics which could avoided yeah absolutely we should be trying to eliminate those but we are using plastics in order to create drug delivery systems which should be used to keep people alive that's a really good use of plastics so i think you have to try and get the balance right here in what is an incredibly complex topic and, and that idea that, that, that really mars has been now embedded this idea of focusing on the next generation and thinking about the future and how are you taking decisions to Sort of safeguarding the future, that really is the essence of sustainability. It's about how do you use resources in a responsible way to ensure that the planet for the future is going to be there for, for, for everybody. Um, so I, you know, I think that's a really smart way of doing it, but I really caution against trying to come up with one single measure or thinking that there are simple measures here. It's, 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 it's a complex topic. Colin, do you have anything to add from C2 Revo? Uh, so I loved Barry's description of how he started the sustainability journey at um, at Mars and, and how he cleverly got on board the um, the board. Because um, first of all, it has to be a boardroom top down decision and incentive, and it has to be linked to um, incentive bonus schemes, career progressions. Um, one of the things I'd maybe recommend for everyone on the call, there's a, there a great report by um, Harvard Business School called What Boards Need to Know About Sustainability Ratings. Just, just Google it, you'll find it easily. Um, so there's several um, uh, ratings firms, ESG rating firms now in exist, some companies like ISS, MSCI. Think of these um, as being for sustainability, what Moody's and Standard & Poor's are for, um, for finance. And these rating scores are then sold to interesting, interested outlets, people like Bloomberg. So um, um, ultimately, that's going to have an impact on um, share price, on the ability to access funds, as I described earlier on. And procurement absolutely should be owning that agenda and driving it with the, uh, um, you know, by the boardroom. Um, 
So, returning back to you, uh, Barry, for a moment. Um, so, you deal with a lot of um, mature markets and mature supply chains. Um, so, to avoid sustainability becoming sort of a bolt-on added element, um, how do you get people thinking about it as an integrated approach and set it up from the ground floor? Yeah, I think it's challenging in, in many cases. Um, but, you know, let me brought up the area of packaging. Let me let me talk a bit about plastic packaging. It's you know, interesting. We're, we obviously, uh, Mars operated the consumer packaged goods industry. And, it, and it, the reality is it's pretty much the consumer plastic packaged goods industry. Um, look at the primary packaging. And, and, you know, every company has spent 50 years optimizing uh, plastic packaging since it was introduced. And, you know, I was a, I was a packaging engineer uh, 35 years ago, and I spent a lot of time optimizing uh, packaging lines around this. Um, and the reality is we didn't understand what happened at the back end of the supply chain. And, and we've now got to, you know, the next five years, redesign uh, that whole supply chain uh, to make it sustainable. And it's a massive disruption to our industry. Um, you know, this is a, uh, a disruptive wave coming up the packaging uh, industry, the consumer uh, products industry. And, um, you know, I think this is going to be the issue that brings, you know, sustainability into every corner in, in our industry. It's not, you know, you can argue some of these other issues, deforestation, forced labor, that people care about, <coughs> they're quite remote. <coughs> packaging is in your hand, it's intimate. People, every consumer is asking, what do I do with this? Where is it going to go? Uh, so I think this is going to be the issue that really brings this home. And, um, uh, you know, what I've been trying to say across our business is don't think about the sustainability issue. Think this about this as a, as a business issue. There's going to be winners and losers. Uh, you know, winning companies will grow share, will grow earnings, will grow reputation, will grow trust. Um, losing companies are all, all the opposite. And it's those that manage through this transition that are going to do that. And, and it therefore becomes an enterprise issue. You think about it, you need every function working on this. You need marketing sales, you need R&D, you need uh, supply chain, you need procurement, you need corporate affairs. They all need to work together to solve this, uh, this, this disruption. It's an existential issue for our industry, and, uh, and that creates a, a huge challenge, but a huge opportunity to get this right. So um, we have to win with the consumers. Absolutely, and Colin, you mentioned about relating that back to the boardroom previously. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure I could um, um, add wildly to what uh, what Barry's already said, um, but it, it has to be cultural, and um, and if you're going to drive a cultural change through the organisation, then it has to be owned in the you know, again in the boardroom. So uh, most successful uh, sustainability initiatives that we see are driven by the CEO or indeed by the, you know, by, by, the by the chairman, and in many respects, it's um, procurement's opportunity to shine. I, uh, I often see, um, you know, when I speak to CPOs, how can we, you know, the question is always asked, how can we be more of a, a value adding um, uh, part of the business? How can we be more relevant in the boardroom? This is, this is our, our, you know, our time to shine around, uh, around this agenda because it will have a real value driver one way or another for the, uh, for the company. Absolutely. Um, well, we've covered a lot of ground there, um, and thanks for you know experience and sharing some of your insights. But um, if we can switch over to some of our viewer questions, and um, we've had some really great ones coming in, um, so I'm just going to throw these out and we'll see who uh, see what we've got here. So I have one first from Barry. Um, so um, according to what you were saying earlier, so when reducing a supply chain from 1500 to 15. Um, how do you balance the SME agenda to ensure small farmers don't actually lose out? Um, supply chain consolidation and encouraging SMEs seems to always be in conflict. Yeah, no, I don't think it, it, it has to be in conflict. So, you know, back, back to that palm oil uh, example, you know, often you have uh, what they call a sort of a plasma structure where you know, around every plantation there are small holders and the plantation provides some services but also an outlet for, for those smallholders. So that the, reducing the number of, of mills um, doesn't change the proportion of smallholders in your supply chain, so just, just as an example. So I don't, I don't think it necessarily has to be a conflict. Some of our supply chains are entirely smallholders. 
cocos, for example, we, we buy about 10% of the world crop, um, and it's entirely from smallholders, uh, about uh, 400,000 smallholders in our supply chain. Um, so all we're doing is getting to know those smallholders individually, um, and, and frankly, buying from the same smallholders year after year rather than different ones. So that gives us the opportunity to invest with them. You know, we now know that we've, we've, we've mapped half of them. We know exactly where their land is. We're direct, dealing directly with them. We have programs that are over multiple years with them. So I, I don't see any conflict um, between uh, consolidation and, and SMEs. It, it actually gives you the opportunity to invest consistently at the SME level. Another anonymous one just come in. Um, perhaps, um, perhaps Malcolm would have something to respond to this one. So we found out this week that thousands of garment workers in the UK, specifically Leicester, um, are not being paid the minimum wage. Bearing in mind this is in the UK, how can we be certain, even with SMETA and SEDEX, the workers in factories from overseas are being treated fairly and paid fairly? I guess I would start off by saying uh, it, it is the core responsibility of the procurement to understand your supply chain. Uh, and understanding your supply chain is not just your direct suppliers, but it's your supplier suppliers, your supplier supplier suppliers, where you talk about really critical items. Uh, I believe all good corporations have laid out a code of practice, a code of practice of what they expect from their suppliers. Um, and then they need to put in place the right uh, checks, right, uh, controls, the right audits um, to be able to understand what is going on in their supply chain. You, you cannot hide behind this one. Um, now, uh, the sad truth is that even with all of these activities, and there are many, many good organizations out there who are focusing really hard on eliminating this, uh, this horrendous practice of modern-day slavery. But even with all of the good initiatives that are, that are, that are going on, there are still people that are, that are getting through. Um, and, and I would then say to you, the organization, well, what are you doing in terms of ensuring that your procurement people, um, your quality assurance people are truly focused on ensuring that there is none of this going on in your supply chain? Because uh, so Barry and I would have like, some similar experiences. If you ask the right questions, you put the right audits in place, you put the right controls in place, and you can eliminate this. And, and many corporations are doing that and doing it successfully. Unfortunately, there are some that are not yet there. Um, do you want to add to that, Barry, or should we? Well, I think I think that what that example brings home is it's not necessarily at the far flung reaches of your supply chain. Um, this issue is everywhere, and, and it's in uh, developed and, uh, as well as developing countries. So, yeah, it, it, and it's not, uh, it's endemic in many places. And so it's extremely challenging, and um, we just have to work methodically through it. You can't, you can't solve this overnight, but when you do find it, you have to solve it. Um, and uh, so you've got to keep looking, keep solving, keep looking, keep solving, and uh, we will be at this for a while. Kerry, I might also say, I think this is one area where I think organizations should collaborate more because this, this isn't about competitive advantage. Yeah, the competitive advantage, take, take the apparel industry, the competitive advantage comes from your design, how unique your design is, how your, that design appeals to your, your shoppers, your consumers, and it comes from the terms you negotiate. It doesn't come from using unethical labor uh, compared to your competitors. So I think this is an area where you should see, and I'd like to see more collaboration between competitors to try and eliminate these practices. And Kerry, I think building on, on the point Dr. Mark and Barry have made as well, we, um, there's a responsibility within procurement to also negotiate procurement contracts effectively with these organizations. And if you nail them to the wall on price or other you know, payment terms or other conditions, um, then you will get these outcomes. So there's a responsible procurement, um, and ethical procurement that needs to go alongside this. And also, you know, we've talked about making finance tools available to these suppliers where they can't get access to them. So providing the right tools and, um, and infrastructure so that we can eliminate these, uh, these bad practices. Um, 